Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly get started using OTR version 2. So what you're looking at on the screen is uh, the blank version of OTR2 when it launches. What you're gonna do to get started, you can use the blank template if you want. My recommendation is to go up to the file menu, choose a project template. I'm gonna choose the sample project. And what you'll see is something that looks like this. Um, down the left-hand side, um, you're gonna have a fader for each of the active tracks. Uh, you're gonna have, um, track categories. So this underneath each of these gray um, tracks, we're going to add the individual tracks to start a project. On the right side of the screen, we have the main uh, output fader. We have a floating reticulate window that you should see. If you do not, uh, you would hit command zero uh, on the Mac to bring that up. And so that will toggle it on and off. Command equals takes you to the mixer and command minus brings you back to the main viewing area. What you'll notice, you're gonna have a place to place your video tracks or um, time code elements if you need to do that. You have a stems folder. This particular section is, uh, if you render stems in OTR, they're gonna go there. Um, again, this is the how to get started in OTR, so this isn't all the detail information. If you want to import tracks, this section is created so you can just place them in here and keep them out of the way of your main project. Uh, you have a VCA section. Uh, if you're familiar with VCAs, uh, you'll be right at home there. If not, um, there that will be in a how-to video. And then you have this mix bus section. Uh, the important thing to know about this is every track in OTR uh, routes out of this main track that says mix bus. If you have any effects that you're going to put on your final track, you're going to put it on this guy. Now I would say wait to do that till you are in the mixing process rather than the recording process because that will add latency. But uh, that is where they go. You don't really need to know much about this. If you want to use this for reverb aux sends, you're going to just place them on these tracks. Otherwise, the only thing you need to know right now is that this main mix track, mix bus, that is your final output track. Now, everything else goes inside of these category tracks. These category tracks, I, you can see, are different groups in the sample project. I've named them to traditional orchestral sections. And so to get started, what we're going to do is we're going to right click on a section and we're going to go to insert track from template. And then we are going to choose from a number of tracks here. So if you're going to record a live track, just pick an audio track. If you are going to uh, record a virtual instrument, like say you have a contact instrument or a play instrument, something from East West, it doesn't really matter who you're going to use. The type of configuration is already built. So you can go ahead and come in here. And for example, with contact, we can choose an instrument. We now have a blank track. If we click on the top left corner, you can see that contact has been added to the track. And we can come in here and just add our instrument and it's ready to go. If you want to record something, Command Shift R is what I use and then We'll record that. If we wanted to freeze this particular track, like say we had to consider our RAM resources on our computer, you would hit Option F, and this will freeze the track. Unfreeze, Option U. And then disable the track, Option D. Activate it, Option A. So those are the, the four methods. So freeze, unfreeze, disable, enable. So Option A for activate, Option D for deactivate or disable. Option U for unfreeze and option F for freeze. So that's the basic workflow for those types of instruments. If you don't like the category names that you have going on here, say maybe you are an EDM producer or something and not going to be dealing with uh, any of these types of categories, uh, you can click on this OTR preference button and it will uh, load up this nice little matrix here and you just change each of the category names to what you want. And then whatever type of groups you want to put them in, you don't have to use them all. If you want to just use one and just say master mix and just drop all of your tracks in there, that's perfectly fine too. Um, just use this as your routing matrix for rendering stems. Now you may be saying, what are stems? Basically, OTR gives you the ability to uh, take any of these categories 
and create an audio file that's rendered of the uh, tracks that are within it. We want to make sure that these guys get rendered properly. Just kind of know that that's what these guys are for. Uh, navigating in OTR, you'll notice at the top of the screen, you have a set of toolbars. Uh, these guys will help you in all that you do. The render menu buttons allow you to just click a button and have it render all those stems that we were talking about. The rebuild menus button uh, will allow you to customize your menu. I didn't save this earlier, but say we had set that up as like a drum kit and then this one was bass and this was uh, sub drops and you know, whatever we're gonna have hits. Different types of categories. If we had done all of that and saved it, um, one of the things that we would need to do, so you can see that it goes ahead and changes the category name. So we have drum kit, bass, sub drops. You don't want to change these by typing on it. That's not what those guys are for. You can change anything else but those. You'll notice that the categories at the top of the page um, have not updated. So if you click your rebuild button and then hit yes, it will prompt you to restart Reaper. I'm going to just save this project. We'll do temp. Save it there, close out Reaper, load Reaper back up. Open that last project we were in, and you're gonna see that the menu now looks like uh, what we had just set it up for. If you ever need to reset the menu, just open up a blank project and hit the reset button, say okay. Quit Reaper, load it back up and they're just set to generic names. So just know that that's how the menu system works. The visibility toggles allow you to tuck away things that you wanna see or don't. So let's say the only tracks that we have in here right now are in the drum kit section. So let's just go ahead and hide everything and then show the drum kit section. And say we wanted to work on a second section, I'm gonna click on that, the base, I'm gonna right click insert tracks from templates. And let's just assume that I was gonna record that as a live audio track. And that's what we do. As for getting started, that should cover most of your needs. You should be able to get going with it. If you are interested in Reaticulate, um, that's probably gonna fall into the advanced features video. So check that out. That's what this floating window is over here. Any questions that you have about Reaper, definitely check out the Reaper forums, uh, the Reaper manual. Uh, OTR is a hot rodded version of Reaper. You have a thousand scripts and actions combined that power everything that you're seeing. That being said, I hope you're able to get started making music. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me via the contact form on the website, orchestraltemplateforreaper.com. And thank you for watching.